faces. There's a lot of you that I haven't met. I'm glad you're here. I know a lot of you already know the Heritage Program. I, I talked to a number of you. It looks like you have, uh, many of you have older children that are here, maybe some that are a little bit newer. But my name is Jared Taylor. For those that I haven't met or those that I don't know, uh, my role at Heritage is I'm the charter owner and um, Earl Taylor is the founder of Heritage. He founded this about 27 years ago in downtown Mason. I worked with him for about 10 years before he retired. So it's a, it's a pleasure to work with uh, this school and we have three other schools in the uh, Phoenix area that uh, service roughly about 3,000 children. This is our first elementary that we're building after 25 years of people asking us, please build an elementary, please build an elementary. <clears throat> There's so many other elementaries that were excellent at the time, we didn't really feel we needed to, but with such fast uh, growth, and um, there's not enough seats of quality elementaries. Plus, there's definitely a change in what some elementary programs are offering. So we felt it's important for us to go ahead and, and uh, move into the space and, and build an elementary school. So we're excited to, to offer this, uh, this great program here. Um, I know Shalise is gonna cover a lot of things. Some of you know Shalise Arnold already. If not, she's gonna uh, speak here in just a minute. I was lucky enough to hire her as our planning principal, and she's going to be our first year principal. When we looked for what we wanted to do, we didn't want to do anything too different than what we've been doing, which is focus on really three things that our mission has always stood for since we started 27 years ago. The first is character. We believe the purpose of education is to build strong character. Number two, we believe that we should learn the ideals and values of our country. And number three, we should learn and be prepared to serve. Go do something positive in the world. Go make a difference. Those are our three pillars of our uh, mission statement. They've always asked been. We've never changed a word of it. And we believe that uh, the elementary school and under Mrs. Arnold's leadership, we can continue that forward. She's got an outstanding track record in this community, building very high quality schools and uh, great leadership. And so we're really lucky that uh, she's able to join our team. And she's gonna describe a little bit about uh, our program here that, that we're building. So with that, Shalisa, if you'll join me, if you'll, if, and those of you that are here, if you'll uh, join me in welcoming Shalisa Arnold. For that, Mr. Taylor, that was very nice. I'm honored um, and blessed to have joined the Heritage Academy team, and every day I come uh, to work just grateful. Uh, and as we've been building this program uh, all day, in the evenings, on the weekends, getting this ready, uh, and specifically to launch a little bit of what we've been working on to you today, I found myself even last weekend just in goosebumps thinking about what an awesome opportunity we have. Uh, to serve the families in the area, and that's really where, where I come in. That's my job. I'm here to serve uh, the families uh, in this Southeast Valley, those that come to Heritage Academy. And now we get to do that at an elementary level, which is my love and my passion. So I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be talking to people, I'll be honest, instead of the computer screen. So <laughs> this is really great to see that, uh, that there are people interested. I'm grateful for that. And um, I like to talk. I especially like to talk about things that I'm passionate about, and elementary, and education, and families are something I'm passionate about. So I won't bore you too much today, and hopefully I'm giving you some things that will uh, allow you to ponder your decisions that you're making for your families for this upcoming school year, and I hope Heritage is one of those that rise to the top for your choices for your family. All right, for introductions, um, you guys met Mr. Taylor, and now you know all about me, more than you probably wanted to. We would like to draw your attention to a few more people that you'll be interacting with um, as hopefully uh, you begin the enrollment process and start to learn a little more about us and what that's going to look like. And so uh, you met her on your way in, but we'll make sure you know where her name is, Paris Clark. She's gonna give us a quick wave. She is the first person hired at the elementary school. So she's our registrar. She will be your, um, your go-to for all things uh, registration involved. So if you're here at the Gateway campus, you know Patience Scott. 
Um, she's in that office up front, and she and patients are working together to make sure we get our K-5ers um, all ready to go for this next school year. And then I would like to recognize any current Heritage Gateway teachers that are present with us today. I know we've got a couple that were quick to raise their hand and say, yes, I will come, I will help. Raise your hand if you're a current Heritage Gateway teacher. We've got the Passies back there. And she's not, she's hiding. Mrs. Manna up here at the table as well. Oh, I, I didn't see Mrs. Little walk in. So she's, she snuck right in and she teaches math here as well. So thank you for your support as well. We'll be taking, taking, drag them across the street. We'll be taking those junior high teachers with us um, across to the elementary. So uh, I'm it, elated that we get to start that school with existing gateway teachers who will uh, help all of us understand what that looks like and then just drop it down to the elementary level. Um, very quickly, before we get into the presentation, uh, the website is a, will be a great tool for you to use. Uh, as That's where we'll update everything. So it's, uh, I think it's on the information that you got at the sign-in table as well, but hagateway.com slash elementary uh, will drive you to everything that you need as far as enrollment applications and all of that. That will be a great starting spot. Of course, uh, you can call the office, um, and I believe our phone numbers are all on there. And then if you grabbed my business card, that's the direct line to the elementary. It'll push you to a voicemail, but that gets to our inboxes, um, and we return those calls. So you have a couple, yes, you can go to the website, but if you need to talk to a person, you can do that. Uh, so make sure you get in touch with someone. I'm also located at this campus, so you can always find me here. I have an office in the main building too, uh, so if you call, anyone in the office can direct you to me as well. So don't think you just have to get lost in this abyss of website. That's a great tool for you, but if you need to talk to someone, please reach out and do that. All right, the reason you're all here, let's learn about this thing. What? are we doing? I'm saving the pictures for the end. Oh, isn't that mean of me? It's so mean. I've been excited to get the pictures, but we're going to save them until the end because you won't care what I say after you see the pictures. That's not true. All right. So, welcome everyone. Uh, this rumor about the elementary started, I don't know, a couple of years or so ago. Um, and it's finally here. We are actually opening for school year 22-23. And while it looks like nothing in the field across the street, there it will be. All right, Mr. Taylor went over some of this, but a little about Heritage Academy. Started in 1995, was one of the very first charter schools. It's called a public charter school, just so you understand the world of charters. We have no boundaries. Anyone can come to our school. We have no tuition, so it's not a private school. And we are funded by the state. So that's why we're called a public charter school. So publicly funded by the state, no boundaries, no tuition. Most people say it's like a private education for free. That's what they feel like they're getting when they come to Heritage Academy. As Mr. Taylor mentioned, there are four junior high and high school campuses, and they are consistently recognized for high academic and behavior standards. That's the reputation that Heritage has. And this will be the first elementary program that we have in the Heritage Academy system. And most of all, my little caveat at the bottom that we are excited to start educating the youngest minds in the Heritage way. Um, and you'll see some posters. Here's one right here, the Heritage Way. I put one um, out on the door as you come in. But that is the Heritage Way. That's what we do. And we're excited to be able to bring that to our youngest heroes. Again, um, as Mr. Taylor mentioned, uh, the Heritage Way really focuses on a few dynamic traits. So we really work on service. We really work on character, standards, and then of course, a love of America is woven into everything that we do. So that's what we'll be doing at the elementary as well, thinking of ways that we can implement those characteristics into our scholars. 
Uh, as you came in, you might have seen an easel that had a picture on it. Abraham Lincoln and the word above his head said, Honest. Um, just like the junior high and high school, that we have a very defined citizenship program where scholars are able to think about things, they're able to uh, relate their own experiences to our heroes of the past who plan to do something similar, but in an elementary way. Uh, so we're going to highlight our country's heroes and people that exhibit virtues that we want to emulate and people that solve problems in a way that is needed today. And so that's what we'll be doing at the elementary as far as citizenship goes. So how do we do that? Number one, most important way, teachers. Teachers are the backbone of the school. Teachers do all the heavy lifting. So I'm looking for teachers, and this is research proven. This isn't just Ms. Arnold standing up here talking about it, giving her opinion, although it is a very high opinion of mine, but it's research that teachers are the most important influence that impact student success. So it would be wise of us to pay attention to the teachers that are filling our classrooms. If you're an existing gateway parent, it might be interesting to, for you to know that 40 of the 59 current teachers in this building have advanced degrees and have experience in the double digits for sure teaching students. Teachers want to teach at Heritage Academy. There's not a lot of teacher turnover. Uh, they tend to hang on to the teachers that they have. No one wants to leave. And so the few spots that are available at the end of the year go very quickly. The reputation that Heritage has speaks for itself and people want to come. They want to teach. They want to be a part of what we're doing for students. So we posted our jobs last week. These kindergarten through fifth grade positions are officially posted on the career page. And within 12 hours, we had over 50 applicants. And now that it's been seven days, we are nearing 100 applicants for the 20 positions that will have open. That's what gave me goosebumps last weekend is I just kept getting the notifications. Another one applied, another one applied, and as I'm looking at resumes, I thought, holy cow, we have a great opportunity here. We get to, we get to teach children at a very high level because we will be filling that building with the best teachers, which is, gosh, as a parent, don't you want to hear that? As a principal, that's what I want to hear. We get to be choosy. We get to pick the teachers that we think are going to be the very best to teach our children. Um, I did, I, I'm a numbers person, so I did a quick perusal of the resumes, and the applicants that have applied, on average, have 10 years of teaching experience. For me, I'm thinking, we're building a new building, all the teachers have jobs. So does that mean we're going to have a new building with brand new teachers? New teachers are great. I was a new teacher once, and I'm glad someone took a chance on me and saw the potential that I had um, to impact students. So everyone has to start somewhere, and I want new teachers. They bring um, excitement, they bring love for their job, but when you're building a building like this, you want a nice blend. You want a little bit of everything. I call them your wily veterans and your excited new teachers. We need a little bit of all of that. And I'm grateful to see that the interest and demand in heritage is going to give us exactly that. So what does that mean? How does that benefit your child? Hopefully you're connecting the dots. You will have a teacher in the classroom for your child that has worked out all the kinks and they know how to manage around student learning, student happiness, and student success. And that um, is wonderful. All right, let's talk program. These are probably um, the questions that are running around in your mind uh, a lot. What about this, what about this, what about this? Mine too, they're running around in my mind too. Uh, so first of all, that building will be a K-8. Uh, and as I've researched a little more, a lot more about that, um, it's actually 
the most successful model for organizations that have K-12 um, in their range. A lot of people have tried different, like K-6, and then a self-standing middle school and a self-standing high school. They've done where it's a, a K-6 and then maybe 7-12. There, any combination you could want, you can find. Um, but as we decided that probably K-8 and 9-12 um, would work, um, and we felt like that was probably the wisest, the, the research also backs that up. Um, that, that middle school group tend to do better when they're sandwiched on the back end of an elementary rather than pulled into a, a high school. That's not to say that that's a bad model because it works for many, um, but it was comfort to me to know that what we're doing is good for children. So that will be a K-8, and just to uh, maybe calm any fears that that might bring, um, the building is such that there's an entire wing that is dedicated to the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders because they kind of need their own space. They need to know that this is, you know, I'm a big kid. This is where I get to be. Um, but I love that model because then we give opportunities to our middle school kids to be the leaders of the campus rather than attached to a high school where the high school tend to be the leaders of the campus. So we're really going to be able to encourage some leadership with those middle school kids as well. And then a separation of sorts, they'll have different lunch times. And again, there are doors that separate where the elementary is going into the junior high corridor. The gym um, will be, and I'll show you a site plan, but the gym will be mostly for junior high purposes. We've got a different multi-purpose room that will be used for the elementary end. So really, that's separate programming as far as that K-8 goes. Um, also, another question that we've been getting a lot, so will it be a four-day week? They're thinking, oh my gosh, what about these little kids? How are we gonna do that? Will still be a Monday through Thursday. The times will be offset. The city's gonna probably dictate that we do that anyway just for traffic flow, but also instructional minutes and everything that goes along with running an elementary school looks differently than a junior high or a high school. Um, so the times that we're dabbling on right now would be eight o'clock to 3.15. Um, and we're just making sure that we get all of our instructional minutes in because we're a 144-day uh, school here. So we have to make sure we're getting our instructional minutes. But I also don't want to burden parents with 15 different times to pick up children. I understand that, and that's not good for anyone. So we're, uh, we will find a happy medium that controls traffic, doesn't burden the parents, and that gives us our instructional minutes. Sounds easy, right? We can handle it. We can do that. Uh, but yes, we're looking at a four-day week. Um, we are looking at options for Friday. It's a lot easier for junior high and high school kids to go home and be self-directed once they get there. It's a lot harder for a kindergartner to do that in a home where there are two parents that are working or um, that they would be going home to an empty house. So we're working on Friday options for that. Um, so that's hopefully understand that that's not a deal breaker. If you need a Monday through Friday option, we're working on the Friday option for our elementary. Uh, the junior high will still match the high school. We're taking that programming that is already existing and just pulling it over, and their instructional minutes um, match closely with the schedules and the block and all that good stuff. So junior high will still look exactly like it does now, for those of you who are familiar with that. Okay, another question we're getting is, are we gonna be accelerated? Um, are we going to be doing grade level ahead work? I think those are two very different things. I think you can be an accelerated pace and still be on grade level. Um, so our sixth graders, our current programming is not bumped up a grade level. So it doesn't make sense for our fifth graders to be doing sixth grade work and then move on to sixth grade and do sixth grade work, right? But you probably wouldn't have known that your sixth graders were on level if you have a sixth grader because they're challenged. You're challenged in a different way. So content will be on grade level because I believe that's what's developmentally appropriate for children is to receive information that is on their developmental playing field. Um, what is accelerated and what is the challenge is how and why it's taught. And so we can have higher expectations, higher standards of completion, all of that that's going to teach them what they need to do but with material that they're receptive to learning. And what that does will lessen the frustration. There's a lot of kids can handle the above grade level work and that's great. The curriculum that uh, I'm leaning towards, we haven't made any uh, 
um, firm decisions, but the ones that I'm naturally gravitating toward have natural differentiation in there and are a little naturally advanced anyway. Um, so we get the benefit of all of that without just pushing them forward and just cranking through things for the sake of getting done. Um, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense that we will be on grade level, but the rigor, if you will, will come with how it's being taught and the lessons that we're learning from that on grade level content. Um, some, these are some names, not really set in stone, but Spalding for English Language Arts is probably determined. That's probably pretty um, set in stone that we will be doing that one. I'm a certified teaching instructor with the Spalding Foundation, so of course, 22 years of my educational experience tells me that is a good program. And we are able to teach our kindergartners to read by November using the Spalding method. Uh, so it, it works. I looked at many other curriculum programs, all of which just were a little short of the mark um, from what Spalding uh, gives us. Um, so we're, we're leaning towards that. Um, the math program that we're looking at, uh, Hardily, is Dimensions Math. It's a Singapore product, but Singapore has three different programs, and this is specifically Dimensions. If you go on their website, you can actually get a bunch of samples. Um, so you can look at the teacher book, you can look at the student book, um, you can look at the entire scope and sequence. Um, but that is, I, I'm a, a Saxon, if any of you know those names, I'm a, I'm a Saxon um, advocate. I've seen the benefit that Saxon does for students as well. Um, and there are a few things that I feel are shortcomings of Saxon that I feel like Dimensions uh, provides. So I, I mean, if I were to do it all over again, I think, and I am, I think Dimensions is a good product. So take a peek at that. Um, the other one that we are fairly certain about is in science and history, there's a core knowledge sequence um, by Edie Hirsch, and, um, and he's got a lot of publications anyway, but core knowledge specifically in science and history. Again, online samples. If you're interested, you can uh, get on and poke around in there a little bit and see kind of where our head is going with those particular programs. We're going to stop for just a second. That way you don't have to remember your questions at the very end. Any specific questions about programming that I can answer right now? Yes. That is a great question. Thank you. Um, so you'll see on the site when she asked if we can have a pre-K. So pre-K will be a self-standing building back in the other corner. Um, so only within the Heritage Academy K-8, but it will be a building on the property. And at the October meeting, uh, we'll have more information to share. We've hired a pre-K director um, to take over and start planning that much as we've done in elementary as well. So yes, we have uh, plans and are going to be doing a pre-K. Any other yes in the back? I love that people even know what cursive is. It's wonderful. Uh, yes, big believer, again, research-based uh, on the cursive end. So I would like to start teaching cursive midway through second grade so our third graders are ready for that. Um, it just works a different side of the brain than print does. And so when they're young and when they're learning, and a lot of the um, like dyslexia and dysgraphia, cursive actually helps more than print does um, for kids who have those those uh, difficulties to kind of overcome and figure out. So yes, we'll plan on doing some cursive in second and third. Um, it's not out of the question. We, we won't be starting. Um, starting year one, you, you can imagine it's an undertaking. So what I have kind of structured is we'll be doing a lot of those things as clubs after school and then working into seeing what part of our population would maybe qualify for that. Um, because you, have, you do have to do tests and you have to qualify in order to be in an official gifted program. Um, but there's nothing that says we can't have a club that would just challenge our, our uh, highly effective students in a different way. So yeah, definitely keeping that um, in the backs of our, well, not, nothing's in the back, but you get what I'm saying, yes. So in the upper grades, uh, they require Latin. Will there be a language like Latin required at all in the elementary years, or will that not start until seventh grade? The Latin is kind of in, embedded in elementary English language arts programs because it's so phonetically based. 
Um, so there's a piece of that in the grammar program of Latin, just in understanding words, but we're not planning on any type of ling second language um, really emphasis at all at the elementary level. But yes, you're right, Latin in uh, seventh grade, I believe. We talked about moving it to six, but we're keeping it in seven. Yes. Music, yeah. So music for elementary is actually, I think, on the next slide. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold for that. It gets its own slide because it's fantastic. Way in the back. Yes, it does. Yes. Perfect. Great. Can you just repeat the question for the recording? Yes, I'll repeat the question for the recording. Because you're all being recorded, which I guess I should have said. Your faces aren't on, just mine. Last question over here. You guys are asking all my favorite questions. She asked about half-day kinder. Um, I taught kindergarten for five years, uh, and all five years were half-day. So I had my morning class and my afternoon class, 32 kids in the morning, 32 kids in the afternoon. Um, that's 64 parents and 64 parents in the afternoon. Who's counting? <laughs> Um, I am a huge proponent of half-day kinder as a kinder teacher. I know that option is not possible for many people. So my goal, again, always is to see what we can do uh, to make sure parents get what they need. And I think parents need both options. So we plan to have a half-day option, uh, and what that looks like depends on interest. So when we start this application process, um, a, a qualifier question for kinder would be, do you want morning, well, first of all, do you want full day or half day? And if you want half day, would you prefer morning or afternoon? And then we will just take the ones, whatever interest we get, we get and try to formulate the best plan for everyone. So my goal is that we make both available. Okay, keep those questions because we'll have question time at the end too. Let's go on to this next part where we talk about the special areas. So we know what in the classroom looks like. So what learning are you going to have outside of the classroom? Because I believe learning happens inside and outside the classroom. So special classes and even some club opportunities for our elementary kids, that's super tiny, so I apologize. I'll read through it. Specials and recess. Every scholar will have physical education and general music twice a week. So for instance, their class might have PE on Mondays and Wednesdays, and then general music Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's not just going to play on the playground, and that's not just going into a music room to listen to music. Um, those physical education and music classes will be staffed with people, masters, of that content who have degrees in physical education and general music and will be following programs as well. And with general music comes concerts and everything that we're used to at the elementary level. Uh, every scholar will have a 20 minute recess in the morning and the afternoon. And boy, I'll have to give them more if I can figure out how to do that in the schedule. So I have one draft going where they get 25 minutes. <laughs> Research, again, shows that at the end of a 15-minute recess, most kids haven't even figured out what game they're going to play. They haven't even been able to talk about the rules, so they're not getting the benefit of that unstructured play because they barely decided and now the whistle blew. So I'd like to extend that just a little so they get the benefit of that and they get to do what children need to do, which is unstructured playtime. So right now, 20 minutes morning and afternoon, and every scholar will have 35 minutes for eating and then playing outside. And again, there's kind of a, a, a cushion there that I'm trying to figure out how we can work 40 minutes in um, for lunch and then playtime. So 20 minutes eating, 20 minutes playtime, whatever that might look like. Uh, all because I believe that's what help, is healthy for kids. We do have a separate library uh, in our building. So we're calling, yay, he said that. <laughs> Woo! I am just as excited. I'm excited to fill that library, actually. And then my next exciting uh, benchmark is to fill it with books and then fill it with kids. 
Uh, so that will be great. We will have a library there. We're calling it the Media Center um, because it will have a few computers uh, at full build out. That's what we would like, a few computers that then can be used like a traditional library. They can look books up on those computers. We have older grades who would be able to use that for research at that time. Um, so we will have that uh, right as you walk in the foyer. The library will be through the lobby and to the right. So it will be a great place for all of our families. Um, computer literacy is considered a special area, but we will have a computer literacy class um, that we will have our third through fifth graders participating in once a week. And it's really basic computer literacy. So we're talking about typing. Um, if that makes you nervous as an elementary parent, makes me nervous as an elementary teacher and as an elementary principal. Um, so we would lock that down to where they really can only get on the one site. They're not searching the internet. They're really just going straight to the program that would help them with their typing skills. And science and art, we also have through the lobby and to the left. So the library's on this side, and on this side of the lobby is what we're calling the art uh, and science room for K-5. So it's a room that will look a little different. It will have lab tables and non-carpeted floor so we can take our classes in there. Uh, to let loose a little, if we have a messy art project, bring them in. If we have a science project, we just wanted a dedicated space so that teachers could take their kids somewhere and explore uh, that kind of messy education that is so good for children. So we do have that kind of flex space um, that will be utilized. The teachers will just schedule it out and I guarantee it will be busy all day, every day. For after school, I kind of touched on this already, but every scholar will have opportunities to develop interests and talents through after school clubs. So in junior high, you start to get uh, assigned to teams, you get to try out and do all of those things. But how do I know what teams I want to try out for? That's my goal for the elementary. Let's put clubs in place, just after school clubs, where they get to try a whole lot of things. They get to develop their talents and really figure out what their interests are. Then in junior high, they are uh, trying out for teams, they're practicing and getting better, and then in high school, we're really getting into the competition end of sports. But my clubs wouldn't just be assigned to sports. So I believe athletics, arts, and academics are important for kids to be able to express interest and develop talents. So that would be my goal, is that we have a, a well-rounded um, assortment of clubs for uh, children to choose from. Every scholar will have opportunities to have fun at school-wide activities. Uh, you know, elementary is like to party. We like to have fun events, fun family events, and this will be no exception. Uh, and we will have those opportunities for our scholars and families to come uh, have a good time. And every scholar will have tutoring available when needed. Uh, that's a, a hallmark here at the Gateway Campus as well. The teachers make themselves available to help their scholars, and that is no different. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for. I wish I could put this just big across the whole wall. So let me see if my laser is going to work. I may not have that's gonna do us no good. Okay, this is the site plan. First of all, it's directly across the street. That big plot of land is where we are building. Um, and if you look here, Jermaine Road, and then 80th Street is this side street uh, to the west. Um, so the building itself, the K-8 building, is this L-shaped one over on the left-hand corner. And that's hugging, you can see it's hugging 80th and Germain. Directly across from the football field is where the building will be located. Trying to keep in mind traffic flow, entry and exit, all of that good stuff. So that's the K-8 you can see. Anyone see that bas or the baseball field, softball field up in that corner? Anyone excited about that? Yeah. We're excited about that, right? And it's also big enough. Uh, that it can be a soccer field on one end as well, part of the outfield can also be the soccer field. So that will be great multi-use between the two campuses and we're, we're really excited to be able to beef up some of our facilities in that way with that softball. It is um, competition legal, I'm probably not using the right terms, competition legal for baseball even, so you've got to have 300 feet. I've learned a lot about this 
got to have 300 feet. Um, so we made sure that it was big enough to be able to use for our high school baseball uh, games, and then that, of course, encompasses softball as well. But that would be a great benefit to our, all of our families for years to come as well. If we shoot straight over, you can see the smallest building up in the upper right-hand corner. That's the pre-K, tucked back there in the corner um, where they're super safe. And then down here on the front, there's a white area that's it's not quite to this half street. It's a little bit in, but that's going to be Lexington Academy, and that is a school for autism. And so they're uh, coming in and renting out that space uh, and using that as well. So all, since it's three schools, uh, and that means children at all three places, each one of those schools will, they're separate, if that makes sense. Um, so we'll have our own gates, our own fences around each one of the schools. Um, and then we've got our park, you can see the parking looks a little purposefully uh, divvied up, if you will. So that's what we're looking at. So you can see this a little bit better. This is uh, kind of the first draft that we've had um, of the, the facade of the building. I think I'm just going to advance to the next slide because I, I think you can see it a little bit better in this one. Not really, but what's that? Lights off for this one maybe? Let's try. The whole building, it, they're all on one track, so just so you know, with the exception prep your children. It's like a fire drill is going to go off. Well, that's not bad. And that's much better, isn't it? Okay. So you can see we're looking right now at kind of a red, a red brick facade, very Georgian architecture. Of course, we're Heritage Academy. And we've got kind of this pony wall out front with some pillars. Um, you, the one, two, three sections kind of jut out just a little bit for some architectural appeal, but it really is a beautiful building. This is the first chance we've gotten to see what the outside looks like because we've spent months on the inside which is where we want most of our focus to be of course so the inside is in really good shape and now we just have the shell to put on the outside of course this may change uh, depending on products and shipments and all that good stuff that we're experiencing in our country right now uh, but I think it's a beautiful start this is just the front and then you can kind of see it I don't think this is I'm gonna stop wasting our energy. But on the right hand side is where you would see, in fact, if I just come back here, now that you can see this a little better, um, you see the L shape of the K-8 building. And then up in the corner, <laughs> hey, look at that, right? Oh, here. <laughs> A for effort. That's a self-standing gym. And so that corner would be the middle school core, the middle school, What's that called? Um, area. And then that is their kind of basketball field and their social area, and it goes right to the gym. And so they stay in that quadrant, happy in their world, and elementary kids won't be coming over. They have their own section and their own playground that they'll have. So it really is two defined areas. And let's take a peek one more time now. That kind of gives you a corner feel. Can see a little better of the dimensions and then here's that full front the playground will be on the back side of the building so this is what you'll see going down Germain Road all right so this is some exciting information I say let's start moving dirt right let's make it look like Something's going on over there. So that groundbreaking, if you haven't heard yet, is scheduled for November 4th at 5 o'clock, and we're going to have games, all sorts of fun things. So it'll be an event. So make sure you bring your families out for that. Uh, we'd love to have you. We're planning for plenty. So make sure you are one of those people. So what would be next for you? Just so you know, open enrollment starts November 1st. Groundbreaking, we have November 4th. We will have an orientation uh, in late April for the elementary because there, you probably have a thousand questions of programming 
like uniforms, what are we doing, when do we do this. Like all schools will have that orientation near the end where we make sure we have all your paperwork and we know that you're coming and we give you the nitty gritty, the parent handbook, all that good stuff. So we'll make sure that we have that information to you. The best way to make sure you're getting all the information you need is to sign up on the interest list. I think many of you already are. If you're not and you signed up today, we'll add you just by signing up today. We'll do a comparison and we'll add you to the interest list. If you're being bombarded and you no longer want to be on the interest list, just click that magic little button that says unsubscribe and then we will take you off our interest list. And anyone else who you think might be interested, that would be the best way. Get them signed up on the interest list. We're pushing out emails and information to that group and also posting it on our website. But I know people aren't checking the website every day. So I would want to be kind of on the front end of an interest list that's getting those emails pushed onto them instead of me having to check a website all the time. So we're taking that burden from you. Sign up on the interest list. We'll make sure you get all of those dates that you need so that you know what to do when you're supposed to do it, and you also know the contacts uh, to reach out to if you have questions. Also, follow social media. We're um, getting that up and going for the elementary, so like all of our pages, we're putting all the important information and announcements on there as well. And of course, spread the word. We have had such an amazing, this was supposed to be in the music room in the main building, and as interest started coming in, we quickly saw that we needed a bigger space so we're very grateful for that. Continue to spread the word. For anyone uh, who's interested and you think would be a good fit for our heritage family, we're gonna continue to have these info sessions. Um, they prob will probably know a little more in October than we did now, so of course you're welcome to attend the October one, but it will be mostly the same information leading up to open enrollment um, in November, so people have enough information to feel confident, uh, to fill out the application, and then we'll go from there. All right, that was fast and furious. So we're gonna do, for the good of the group, questions right now, because um, I'm sure you have more questions than I probably have information for right now. We'll write them down and we'll, that will help us kind of go for our next information session. We'll know which questions people are needing answers to. And then if you have specific questions just for your own children, um, what we'll do is after we do a few questions for good of the group, um, then we will, let you be done, and if you want to leave, you certainly can go. But we have, I mean, because welcome to elementary, everything is a game, right? So we have a few stations set up that some of our teachers are going to man, that when we're done answering questions, your children can go. There's a color page, a Heritage Academy with a word search, there's a knock the can over, and there is, um, you know what that's called, cornhole. And then of course, don't forget our treats over there on your way out and this door has a sidewalk to it too so you can grab and go if you want uh, but let's do some questions first do you have you're here all right he's here to answer questions so i'll just pass yes will uh six through eight will they still be rotating classes good question yes the junior high will look exactly like it does here except in a brand new building exciting uh, behind in the hats. Also a good question, are you planning on having a cafeteria? So uh, long range, we have a multi-purpose room that will be for PE and the idea was to be PE and cafeteria for the K-5 so they had a spot to eat inside. That space has gotten really tight so we're still trying to figure out what that looks like. On the junior high end, inclement weather, we can pull them into the gym because it's right there for them. And we'll have the curtain similar. Do they have the curtain in here? Um, there's a curtain that we can drop down so part of it can be for cafeteria. But as a general rule, they'll be eating similar to what they do here with tables, with umbrellas, outside, enjoying that. And in Arizona, that's probably maybe six months out of the year that kids would prefer. In fact, I was here one day and uh, they pulled them inside to eat because there were too many puddles out and I have never heard so many students whining, complaining, I don't want to eat inside. They just wanted to be outside. So hoping for kind of the flexibility to do what we need to do. I meant more of providing food. Oh, you're talking. Yeah. We don't have a full service kitchen over there so it will be catered in. 
Um, and there are options with that though, so we're still just trying to look at what that looks like. At the elementary level, there are some catering companies that will cater full food, like a full tray, instead of like uh, Panda Express bringing it in or something like that. So we're still kind of entertaining what that looks like. Elementary is a little different than they would prefer the cafeteria tray of food over an orange chicken Panda Express, whereas junior high and high schoolers are probably opposite. Give me the pizza, right? Uh, yes, right in front. So I've been here for several years, and uh, getting out of the parking lot is very scary, as well as turning onto Sossaman from Germain, turning left, is very scary. Where, is there going to be anything implemented, stop signs, lights, or anything like that to help with traffic and safety? Okay, questions about parking and, and traffic circulation. So that's, that's an important one. Safety is obviously really important. Number one, we don't anticipate a lot of cross traffic during the day. There, if any, it'll mostly be teachers that might be teaching a course here and then walking across. That's number one. Number two, uh, right now we're in the planning phase with the city of Mesa. It's interesting, that side's Mesa, this side's Queen Creek. And so we're talking to them about traffic lights here in this intersection, um, any turn pockets, extra lane, all of that's going to be done right now. Obviously, safety is number one for all parties involved. So um, we don't have we have an initial circulation plan of the elementary, but in terms of how it integrates with this, the driveways are offset. I think the major takeaway that we want you to remember is. At least for, for the schools on that side, all major traffic coming in and out is going to be off 80th Street, not Germain. Okay, so that relieves all of the traffic on this side for, for in and out. And I, know, I know it's not perfect and we can improve on it, but we're not going to be entering and exiting right here off of Germain for those particular schools. It's all coming off of 80th Street, so that's a major reliever. And, but more details to come. Thank you for asking about parking. I know that's, that's been a big concern. Um, was that also yours? I was, I was waiting for the traffic question. No, I'm just wondering, when you're talking about the library, would you uh, be doing like donations for books? So if we have good quality books, can we save them to donate? Yes. Would you like to head up that committee? I would not. <laughs> she just got voluntold no. and she didn't even know it. I'll, I'll get your name. <laughs> we'll be best friends. Mary. No. I, I will not kill the willing. However, we might beg for, for helpers on occasion. Uh, but yes, absolutely. Mr. Taylor and I were just talking uh, this weekend. I guess today is still the weekend. So yesterday we were talking about book drives and getting all of that going to kind of help us fill that library right at first. And I know you families oftentimes have more books than they know what to do with because kids read them once or twice with the exception of a few and then they're ready to move on. So absolutely, thank you for that. Yes. causing me gray hair right now because <laughs> we want to provide that but they've got the the building and the equipment and everything is here so like mr taylor said we're going to try our darndest to not have uh, students crossing back and forth kempo is kind of one of the exceptions right now that i haven't found a way around that but we, we absolutely are not in the business of saying it was offered and it's no longer offered. So we want to continue what has been done. I mean, traditions are deep, and they're more than traditions, right? It's working for students. So we want to maintain that, and then that just falls on our shoulders to figure out how to make it work. Yes, yep. And eventually, I think when we're, we're gonna have kind of this uncomfortable three years where we're growing both buildings, and then once we're at full build out, we'll have full staff on both campuses, and so it, it won't matter. Um, but we've got to kind of be a little flexible in this first three years as we're building to capacity at both buildings. Well, let me just add one more thing to the Kempo. 
and the lower the grades, the less intense the program needs to be. And that, that's not unique to Kempo, that's for everything. So if we have Kempo Light over there, they're not really using all of the, the pads for hitting and the, and the simulations with knives and guns and those types of things. That's in the higher grades when they're learning all the self-defense for those types of things. So it can be Kempo Light -like, because that's really what they're doing anyways. They're not going to miss the actual programming. Now, on the enrollment, um, do you want to go ahead and take the enrollment question? So open enrollment November 1st for everyone. So if you're existing in Gateway, you'll get information out that that is open enrollment for everyone. This year, the difference is we're adding 500 new spots of K-5ers rolling into that. But yes, November 1st is the day to remember for across the board. Well, let me just add, because I think most of the people here already have students in our program. So the question, I, I received another question of, well, do, do, do my children in the elementary get preference like they normally do? And yeah, that's the case, right? So even though everyone who's, whether they're with us or not, is enrolling, if, you're, if you already have children enrolled with Heritage, your elementary children will have that enrollment preference that the state allows for all schools, districts, and charters. So that'll extend. So we can go into that detail if you're worried or want more on that one. Yes, in the corner. Yep, all of that, she asked about IEPs, all of that is standard uh, for a school that's publicly funded, so we'll have uh, speech and resource services for IEPs as well. Yes, in the green shirt. Interest greater than spots was her um, question. I would love to say yes, the interest at this first info session blew us out of the water by four times. So I know there's interest in that. We have planned to fill three classrooms of every grade level in year one. We have built for four classrooms at every grade level, if that makes sense. So we, our capacity is for at every grade level, and I am the type of person that says, bring me all the children. I want them all. So if our enrollment exceeds our anticipated three per grade level, we've got the classroom, we're gonna fill them. So I think we'll be in a comfortable zone this year. Next year in the purple. Class sizes, great question. Same as here at the Gateway Campus, we'll max out at 25 um, per teacher, so one to 25 ratio. Kinder will have um, kindergarten aides as well, so it will be two adults in the classroom, a certified teacher and then an instructional assistant. Great, in the back. We're not affiliated with any of the districts, being, being a charter school, but we're in the town of Queen Creek on this side, so we have a Queen Creek address. And then, so that means all of the Queen Creek emergency services will all that service this building. And then across the streets in the city of Mesa. So we're, we're answering to, to uh, what are they called? Either way, it's hard enough answering to one, but we're answering to two. We're not affiliated with them at all. Yep, so you can put your mind at ease now. What we do have to follow are the state mandates because we're publicly funded, but we don't have to jump on anybody's bandwagon. We get to do our own thing. That's the glory of a charter school. We have to answer to the state and the charter board. Great, yes. She asked for a discipline program, what that looks like. You guys are asking all my favorite questions. I just want you to know, yes, 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 yes. Just all come to my school. Uh, that would be great. Yes, um, again, uh, most teachers will tell you that a school climate and culture is developed when we have a school-wide discipline plan. So Heritage does that at their junior highs and high schools already, and we'll just be making that age appropriate at the elementary level. But it will be, uh, school-wide plan the teachers will be trained on it so they know what to do and i'm a big believer that students learn that just as much as they learn their multiplication facts they learn what it looks like to behave and if we're all speaking the same language in our classrooms of what that looks like 
uh, then we really, um, we don't have to bother with that on a regular basis because the kids have learned that. So absolutely. And your second question. Um, if you're not a Title I school, we don't accept any Title funds. Um, there are some federal funds like the COVID money because there's so many additional mandates that have been put on us for cleaning. So then federal funds have been available like ESSER. Um, there's also some state grants that come through, but we've never been a Title I school or a Title II school that offers free and reduced lunch. That's typically what people think of when they think of federal funding. Um, but we can talk about more of that. that. That's a little bit of a high level on that. But as a general rule, we haven't um, taken any federal money. There's some startup money that's available, but um, outside of that, we're not a title, and we don't plan. We don't plan to become a Title One, Two, Three, Four school. Yes. Great question. So most of it's an online application. Uh, so if even right now, if you were to go to the website, there's a big bar that says um, enroll now or application or something, and it just walks you through the process. The blue paper that you guys picked up on your way in will kind of walk you through what's expected so you can have everything with you uh, when you do that. But it's all online. It makes it pretty easy. You just have to be able to scan some documents in. Um, and then what that does is the registrar, so Paris and patients are... Uh, processing those applications as they come through and they're reaching out to you if there are any pieces that are missing so that you can have a complete application. Yep, thank you. Yes, in the back. Just the kindergarten, she asked about other grade levels having instructional assistance within their classroom and it would be just kindergarten right now probably have some instructional assistance in the special education department, that's pretty standard. Um, and then I plan on having additional playground aids. Um, at, that's, that's kind of where your extra support goes at an elementary school would be for playground time. Uh, yes. Uh, it gets a it's a, it gets a bad rap that way <laughs> that people just think kids are sitting at desks and staring forward. And really, my um, she asked about desk placement and is it really just kids facing forward listening to a teacher teach all, teach all day? She didn't say that. I added that part. <laughs> she she wouldn't say that. But that tends to get a little boring and really it leads to some student engagement issues in my opinion. So really my only caveat to the teachers would be Spalding is very big on student comfort. So we need to make sure that the student is comfortable. And most of the time if they're in pods where their back is turned but all the instruction is happening there, what do they have to do? Crane around and that's, that would lead to a discomfort. But I think there's nothing wrong with having two or three desks kind of paired together. Really for me it's about facing the front so that they're not having to be in an uncomfortable position to be able to listen and learn from the teacher. That's more of, I would say that's a teacher, more so than Spalding. So that would just be one of the teacher routines that Spalding would say to do that, but really it's about governing your classroom and what that looks like for you. Obviously, if they're not watching and listening, they're not gonna know what to put in their notebook. So, but that happens. I mean, we see that in so many different ways. That's not really a Spalding thing. That would be more of like a teacher direction or like a, a classroom procedure, I guess, would be that. Yes, in the corner. Yet, price is, price is right. Homework, uh, wah, wah. <laughs> it was right up there with the traffic question. <laughs> I love talking about homework because I like to dispel uh, just the instant grittiness that uh, that word kind of elicits to all of us when we hear homework. Because most of the time that means parents are glued to a table or they are uh, bribing their children uh, maybe bribe isn't the right word. <laughs> threatening, threatening your children uh, to get their homework done. So uh, if you've watched my video, that kind of gives a little bit of a peek into my philosophy of homework. 
Um, my philosophy of homework is it's not about the content, it's more about the life skill, and I know that falls very much in line with what Heritage does. Uh, so it's about time management more than, um, you know, me uh, making you do a project at home. It's um, teaching you how to set aside time to do something else other than go home and just watch TV or play a video game or go play with your friends. All of those are important and balanced, but this is about inserting one more thing in there and helping them learn priorities. So I'm not going to say we will have we, we will have homework, but I'm kind of a fix and finish type person. People have heard me say that a lot. Uh, I don't want homework going home that is new learning. That doesn't work. Uh, homework should be something that students are able to do independently. It's often referred to as the seventh step of instruction because in order to know if a student masters a, ma a material, a concept that you're teaching in class, they have to be able to do it independently. Um, so you shouldn't be having to sit with your child and do their homework for them. You've already done third grade math, right? You already passed that. It's not your job. It would be their job. And of course, as a parent, as adults in their life, it's our job to help them process what that might look like and how we can help them be successful. So homework, it's not, sorry, that's, it's not a yes or it's not a no. Um, it will be developmentally appropriate and it's not gonna be out of control, but I also want to make sure they're prepared for the next step. So if we have no homework, no homework, no homework, no homework, and all of a sudden they're a ninth grader and they're taking advanced classes and they've got an hour and a half of homework each night, we haven't done our job at preparing them. So time management, self-discipline, that's what I'm looking at um, for the five or 10 or 20, 40, 25 minutes of homework that they may have. Yes. I think, uh, and I may not be the best person, they're automatically in, but you still have to go through the process of enrolling, right? No. Do we still enroll? Re-enroll. I'll take this one. This is where she is a little bit new to our processes, so. No, you don't need to do anything. Just like when you went from sixth to seventh grade or seventh to eighth, they're already enrolled in the school. So we'll simply have an info session to say, here's how you choose classes, like we did in the spring. And then they'll go ahead and choose their classes. We'll build a schedule, and it'll just be in a different building at that time. So yeah, no, no re-enroll in the school, because they're already enrolled in the school. And we, we did have that meeting last week. So now it's hanging around that it, you'll have updated paperwork to fill out, like your proof of residency. That will be coming, but that's all you'll have to do. Um, yes, over here and then over here. We're working through all of that. Um, so we've got our list of electives and we're figuring, uh, again, my, my goal is to not take away electives that they've already had. Um, swim is a little more doable. Golf is the one that's it's, uh, kind of like Kempo. It's a thorn in my side right now, trying to get that figured out. Uh, but it would be very easy for swim, for whoever's the swim coach, to load up their high school kids and then take the van and go in the drive through and pick up the junior high kids and they'll be on their way. Yeah, I'm looking right now at, she asked about dance, um, and then all basically electives. So we're looking right now about dance and Pilates and just what the um, interest is, like how many sixth, seventh, and eighth graders I have in those programs right now, and so how many classes would we need? So we have a space for that over there, because we'll have a, a gymnasium that kind of has a very typical elementary uh, gym, so it's a similar size gym as this, but then it's got kind of an alcove stage that maybe you might have seen at other elementaries. And so that's the space that we're kind of looking at for some dance classes. Yep. And then you have one. I mean, she asked about penmanship with Spalding, and that makes me sad that they don't teach penmanship as part of Spalding because it's such a big deal um, with Spalding because it's that it's